This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This session is going to look at the Global Reporting Initiative, or GRI for short, and look at the framework that they have put in place that encourages businesses to adopt the standard reporting framework about how they are ensuring that their processes, that their practices uh, are ensuring that that business is sustainable with regard to economic practices, environmental practices and social practices. And if businesses adopt the GRI's framework, then the more businesses that adopt it, the more we can make comparisons like for like as to which businesses are operating in a more sustainable fashion. Because as the world evolves, we need to ensure, don't we, that what is done today doesn't impact generations within the future. Okay, We want to be able to ensure that generations in the future have the same rights, the privileges, the pleasures that we do. And that we are not just an, an all-consuming race, Okay, not thinking uh, about the consequences of what we do as being a customer, as being a supplier, uh, as being a shareholder. Uh, within a business okay we need to give thought to the future and that's what the GRI are, are looking to do so if you are interested please visit the global reporting initiative website I think it's globalreporting.org there's huge amounts of information there for you to get yourself interested into it uh, and it also has some really good examples and, and extracts from businesses that have adopted the framework and how they put it into practice from our perspective, we, we need just to answer ourselves a few questions. Okay, uh, first one there: Does the information contained within an annual report help stakeholders? And I think a lot of you might just jump out and say, "Yes, it does." Okay, uh, but think about who your stakeholders are. You know, your stakeholders are just the shareholders, are they? Yeah, the information within there does help them. Okay, uh, but does it help other users of the account? Does it help the customers? Does it help your suppliers? Uh, does it help your competitors? Uh, does it help the government? Does it help the, the environmental agencies? Okay. Uh, and you could argue that in part it does, that in part it doesn't. Okay. And then when you think about how it does aim to try and help the stakeholders in general, you know, is it all geared towards financial performance? I think it is, isn't it? You know, you've, you've got your... If you think about your annual report, you've got your management commentary at the front uh, with the director's report, the chairman's report and, and all your, your other reports now. So reports on corporate and social responsibility. And then at the back, you, you've got the accounts, haven't you, uh, with the financial statements and the notes to the accounts. And there's a lot of focus, isn't there, from, a, from an auditing perspective, placed upon the numbers and then the disclosure notes. And then when you read what the director says and the chairman says, it's all about how well the business is done or how well the business is done, even though it's not done so well. So it's all geared around financial performance. And in recent years, yes, that things have, have improved with regards to the management commentary. We've, we've thought more, haven't we, about sustainability. We've thought more as well about risk. But there hasn't really been anything as yet that brings them all together, which we'll see later is when we think about integrated reporting, uh, but there's also not been any real focus about what a business should do if it is concerned about sustainability, if it's concerned about the economic, environmental and social impact of what businesses are doing. And, and from an investor's perspective, investors will be focusing more and more upon that. Yeah, the, 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 they'll want to drive and ensure that, that they make the most money from their investments. But Businesses will only be able to, to consume the natural resources to, to a certain point, in which case they'll have to change and start thinking about how that business will then be sustainable into the future. You know, look at technology at this moment in time. Uh, we're, we're thinking about uh, removing diesel cars from the streets of Paris and London. OK, uh, we're moving towards uh, cars that don't use diesel and that are more powered by, by batteries okay so elon musk and, and his tesla business uh, the the electric cars you know that's whereby the motor industry is moving but what are ford uh, what are chrysler uh, what are nissan doing about it what are they thinking about in terms of sustainability okay 
Now, at the moment, everything is geared around performance, isn't it? Okay. So what other areas might influence stakeholders? Well, these days, sustainability. Okay. That's a really big aspect in today's current world. We really need to have a focus about what we're going to do going forward. Okay. And that's where the annual report is limited. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I think the focus is on profitability and performance, isn't it? Uh, within the balance sheet and your income statements. There is some narrative, isn't there, in the director's report and the chairman's report, but it's a pretty biased information, isn't it? And there isn't really enough that reflects about the other issues facing the business in terms of its sustainability. So what's the solution? There you have it. Okay, They exist, the Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, they're all about empowering sustainable decisions. And within that, they have set up a framework. And within that framework, it gives you structure about how you go through and report how your business is thinking about sustainability. So what is the GRI itself? Uh, well, taking it directly from the websites, okay? The globalreporting.org, if you go to the About Us section, it tells them there that they are an international, so no, it's not just UK, US or Western, it, it's a global organisation uh, that helps businesses, governments and other organisations, so don't just think that it's just business, okay? Governments can, can use it and adopt it, I think many of them will. Possibly not America with Donald Trump in power, but there we go. Did I just say that? Uh, and other organisations uh, help them understand how how business will ensure sustainability. So climate change, uh, people deny it. It's there. Uh, the scientific evidence that there is. Uh, human rights in terms of labour laws, uh, corruption and, and various other aspects as well uh, with regard to your economic, environmental and social impacts. Uh, so what is GRI? What's this framework all about? Well, as I've said, it, it's all about those specific disclosures that you have, okay, in terms of environment, society and the economy. Uh, but just note, it's not all about one or the other. It's about focusing on the positives and also thinking about the negatives and how we can go through that and improve that. Uh, if you're going to be sustainable, you need to identify your weaknesses. And if you can identify your weaknesses, you can then become better into the future. And that will therefore hopefully encourage investment. And the key bit is that it tries to standardise things, doesn't it? It's not whereby companies have different approaches to reporting sustainability. Everybody can adopt the, straight, the same approach. And if we adopt the same approach, then there is more comparability. Um, from an investor perspective, from a customer perspective, uh, from a supplier perspective, that will then help you make more informed decisions about what you want to do with your money. If you're a customer, would you want to spend with that business who maybe doesn't have uh, a good social perspective with regard to its labour practices? Uh, you know, in the past, that's happened with Nike uh, when it was discovered that it was using sweatshops in the Far East and paying people very small amounts of money, uh, but then making millions and billions of dollars on sale of these goods. Likewise, there's a low-cost uh, fashion clothing store in the UK called Primark. Again, they were in the headlines in the not-so-distant past when there was a fire at one of its warehouses uh, in, I think, I think it was India or Bangladesh. Uh, and it was then highlighted about the, the working conditions of the labourers there, the, the workforce, and again, it was like, well, is that right? Is that morally right to be going through and, and, and subjecting the workers to, the, to those long hours for, for minimum pay, very, very poor working conditions, okay? Uh, but if we can go through there and standardise what businesses do, we can then make comparisons and we can then start looking at what opportunities there are for the businesses and the risks that are they're faced with. In terms of the guidelines that, that were given, uh, what the business has to do is if it wants to be in accordance and prepare a sustainability report in accordance with the global reporting initiative framework it has to choose two options either the core or the comprehensive option and it will disclose what option it has followed okay quite simply the core option has a little bit less detail than what the comprehensive option has however you know the the, the level of detail is very small okay 
Uh, what you've then got as well is you then need to think about your general standard disclosures, uh, of which I think there are seven general standard disclosures, which apply to the core and the comprehensive option. But for the comprehensive option, uh, there are ever so slightly more disclosures needed uh, for the some general standard disclosures. Okay, I think there's a little bit more. Is it on ethics? Uh, I think strategy and analysis, but we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. And then you also need to prepare to disclose the specific standard disclosures. Uh, we'll see those as well in a moment, whereby there are only two. Okay, Again, they're the same for the core and the comprehensive option. What you need to do is I think you pretty much need to learn the two options, core and comprehensive. I think you need to go through there as well and learn what appears under general standard disclosures, what appears within specific standard disclosures and know what each one of them means. Okay, I, I really can't see the exam questions going any further than that. If you do find them going further than that, then please let me know. Okay, so what I've done is I've just gone through and just put in bits and pieces from the GRI's framework. And what you can see here is that it starts talking about the different categories. So economic, environmental, and social that we've mentioned previously. You can see there that your social category is split out further, isn't it, into labor, human rights, society, and is it their product responsibility, okay? But I draw your attention to, to what are referred to as the aspects. You know, the aspects are the, the subsections of each individual category. Uh, so provide a bit of a focus in terms of what you should be reporting on. And what you need to report on, whether it's the core or whether it is the comprehensive option, you need to report on the material aspects. So as a business, you need to go through there and identify of the economic, environmental and social impact that your business has. Uh, what are the material aspects? The material aspects are the important ones to your business. OK, for some, one will be more important than the other. And the difference between the core and the comprehensive in accordance options is that the core option, you only have to go through there and report on one material aspect for each individual category. Uh, however, if you are looking at the comprehensive option, you need to go through there and report on all material aspects within each of those categories. So the comprehensive option, although there isn't a huge difference, there is quite a lot more that you then need to go through and prepare with regards to your report, okay? Uh, so again, I don't think the the examiner will go through there and expect you to, to rote learn what material aspect or what aspect appears within each category. Uh, I think that will just be going a little bit too far at this level uh, and getting you to, to, to rote learn things, and that's not the purpose, is it? Uh, of what you see at your strategy level, okay? It's much more of, a, of an application. So giving you a scenario within the exam and saying, well, which aspects would relate to this type of business? So it could be there, uh, any business, a, a car manufacturing business, okay? Uh, you would need to look at what aspects are material with regards to economic, environmental, and social, you know, in terms of your environmental aspects let's have a look the uh i think one of the key ones if you're looking at car manufacturers or car production would be emissions wouldn't it okay i don't think biodiversity would be such an issue water wouldn't be such an issue but maybe materials and energy okay in terms of what materials are used whether they can be recycled uh, whether they are environmentally friendly and also the amount of energy that you're consuming and manufacturing that car OK, uh, so I think that's much more likely that, that, that you would need to go through there and think about. OK, again, it's likely I'd have thought to be one of those select door style questions. OK, uh, in terms of the general standard disclosures, uh, you've got them there down the side. Is it the seven? OK, uh, you can put them in by sector as well, but I'm not too worried about that for the time being. Uh, I'll just draw your attention. Uh, I think the additional disclosures that you have under the comprehensive option are for governance and is it their ethics and integrity? I think I said strategy and anal analysis and ethics and integrity. It's governance and ethics and integrity. OK, there are some additional, if you like, disclosures that need to be made. 
you don't need to know what those disclosures are. By all means, read the textbook if you've chosen tuition provider. I think that will be contained within there. But, you know, in terms of what the standard disclosures represent, you know, you, your strategy and analysis is effectively about how your business is going to ensure stability in terms of the risk, in terms of the impacts, in terms of how that influences your stakeholder. Uh, your organizational profile is effectively just detailing the products, the services that the business goes through and operates. So what do we do? Where do we do it? Okay. Uh, identify material aspects and boundaries. Now, so that's thinking about the economic, the environmental and the social aspects uh, and how you've gone through there and chosen the material aspects. You know, the material aspects are the ones that influence the stakeholders the most. Okay. Uh, stakeholder engagement effectively is who are they okay why are they important uh, your report profile effectively is how often is it done uh, what assurance can you give over the disclosures that you make uh, what is the content of your report does the content align uh, with the content principles that you have from the GRI framework in terms of governance, that's all about how your governance is applied. So how do we go through there and ensure that sustainability objectives are being met, the targets are being set correctly and are achievable? Again, a lot of that, I think, is more geared towards your enterprise pillar. So E1, E2, and at this level, is it E3? Uh, and then uh, your ethics and integrity. Okay, uh, How do we go through there and ensure... Uh, and prevent uh, the, the targets that we be, are being set being manipulated. You now, if you think about uh, Volkswagen and the recent emissions scandal, I say recent, it's not so recent now, it's a few years old, uh, but, you know, they would start talking there about the ethics and, and how they've gone through there and changed the corporate culture to ensure that we're not breaching emissions targets and, and trying to fix the results deliberately, Okay. Uh, so that's just a little bit of background about the general standard disclosures. In terms of the specific standard disclosures, uh, you know, th this is where we bring in the, the big difference between the core and the comprehensive. You know, For the specific standard disclosures, you've just got your disclosure on the management approach. So what are the material aspects and how are they managed? Okay, uh, And then the, the indicators is whereby you know you need to go through there and just show what has been identified and, and why it is of importance okay uh, the key difference if memory serves me right and i can see it there it's in front of me you know we need at least one for each identified material aspect in the core and then it is there is it for all the indicators uh, is it there uh, that are material Okay, uh, so if you've got three material aspects uh, within your, let's say, shall we say, blah, 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 your environmental aspects or your environment, environmental category, uh, then you need to report all of them under the comprehensive, but just one under the core. Okay, uh, so usually I'd have thought businesses would adopt the core and then as they become more familiar and have set up the business processes uh, to be able to effectively report on sustainability then we would start to adopt the comprehensive option okay uh, and then a couple of the areas were starred and that's just there uh, in terms of why they may be omitted okay so there might be a material aspect under the comprehensive option but you omit to go through and disclose it uh, you need to go through there and explain why it has been omitted uh, and effectively it's either maybe it isn't applicable to the business uh, it could be uh, that there are confidentiality constraints so that might go through there and, and be detrimental to the business or maybe there are specific legal prohibitions that prevent you from doing so okay uh, but as i said if you look at the websites globalreporting.org there's everything that you need within the this is just a very 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 high level review uh, make sure that you read the study text we chose in tuition providers and, and just practice the questions on this. Uh, I really don't think you, you need to do much more. OK, if you do, uh, then brilliant, uh, but maybe leave it until after the exam. OK, so focus on what we've gone through here. Focus what's in our class notes, focus what's in the study text and then focus uh, on the revision questions. Other than that, 
In the next session, we're going to bring in integrated reporting, whereby sustainability reporting is one of the cogs that feeds in to an overall integrated report. So what we've covered here feeds into what we then see within your integrated reporting. But for now, it's goodbye to global reporting, and I'll see you all shortly for your integrated reporting.